Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I'm going to take a look at SageMaker Canvas, a new launch from uh, reInvent just a couple of days ago. So uh, according to AWS, SageMaker Canvas is a visual no-code interface to build accurate machine learning models. And um, I wrote a blog post on it. Uh, so that was the first look. And I'll put the link uh, to that post in the video description. Uh, to make a long story short, I wasn't too convinced. I had quite a few technical issues and I was a bit skeptical about the service itself. So I figured, hey, let's give it a second look. I'm gonna try a different data set. I'm gonna try a different AWS region. So maybe this one has a fewer bugs and we'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, go and check the blog post if you haven't. That'll give you some context. Then come back here and we'll dive into that second demo and see what's what. Okay, here we go. In my blog post, I used the Titanic Survivor dataset. And I figured, okay, let's try something else. Let's try something a little more complicated. So this time I'm using uh, a dataset for insurance claim a fraud detection and some of you may remember this one um, we used it in a SageMaker Friday episode earlier this year okay and I'll include that link as well so that you can watch that full demo where we used the uh, auto glue on to train models on this so the data set is uh, built from two CSV files there's a file called claims.csv uh, and there's a file called customers.csv and uh, I've uploaded those two files to S3 and, uh, and we're going to import them to Canvas and look at the files, okay? Um, so adding a data set in Canvas is pretty simple. Uh, you can import, uh, unfortunately, the only option is only importing from S3. Direct upload is still not working, sorry. Uh, so hopefully they fix this one soon. And you can import from Snowflake or Redshift, right? So connect to a backend and run a SQL query to import um, your, your data. So here, what I just did is, hey, let's go and, uh, you know, go and fetch those two files from S3 and click on import. And that was it, okay? So the claims data set, let me let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, the claims data set has information on the claim itself, so uh, driver information, incident type, a number of vehicles involved, number of injuries, number of witnesses, etc., etc. The date, uh, and of course a label fraud that tells us you know zero one yes or no is this claim fraudulent? Okay. And there's a policy ID column that we can use to join on customers. Okay, and here obviously we have additional information on the customer. Still have the policy ID, customer age, um, the amount of the policy, zip code, gender, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's that's my data set, and we have five thousand rows. Okay. So I imported both and I can join those two files. So that's that's a nice little uh, feature here. Uh, I can go and grab those two files and the join happens automatically because uh, I guess Canvas figures out there's a column with the same name in both data set. Um, so, okay, we could go and select uh, and, uh, and join that thing. Okay, um, perfect. I have the joint data set, which I already saved. And if I look at it, of course, we're going to see all our columns, all the driver stuff, all the customer stuff, and then of course the claim stuff. Okay. So importing and, and joining is pretty straightforward. And uh, I'm just hoping a direct upload will be quickly fixed. You know, I'm guessing less technical users would rather do that instead of messing with uh, S3 buckets. Okay, um, now let's move on to modeling. So we can just go and click here. I've already trained a few things 
in the interest of time, but I'm going to show you how that works. So let's click on new model and yeah, let's keep that name. Uh, we pick a data set. So here I'm going to pick the join, um, the join data set. And I need to select a column to predict. So let's do this. Uh, and it's called fraud. Uh, immediately we see this data set is quite imbalanced, as you would expect, right? You know, few claims are actually fraudulent, about three, four percent. Okay. So let's see how uh, Canvas will deal with the imbalance. I don't have any way to fix it. Um, so we'll just have to live with that. Uh, the model type has been uh, automatically uh, detected from the distribution of the target column. And yeah, I'm going to run here a two category prediction doesn't mean anything. Uh, I think we're trying to say binary classification uh, and the other types are equally silly. No offense, a three plus category model type and number model type. I mean, can we use industry standard terms? Um, you know, if a business analyst goes to a data scientist and say, oh, could you take a look at my three plus category model? Uh, you know, people will just laugh or be confused. So I think everybody's smart enough to understand uh, what binary classification means and linear regression means. So uh, yeah, if we could please fix that. Thank you. I think this is really a terrible choice. So next we see information on the columns. And uh, yeah, let me get out of the way here. All right, that's better. Um, yeah, so we can see information on the columns. Uh, we can see you know, mean values and missing values, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right, and uh, that's uh, that's also useful. I just wish we could resize those panels. Um, you know, this is a little inconvenient here. Uh, and if I look at this. I can see um, you know, distributions and I can see uh, additional stats on, uh, on all those columns. And I could go and um, remove columns that I wouldn't want to include in the training job. Okay, but I'll just keep everything here. Okay, all right. And I guess if I zoom out a little bit, it's gonna look a little better, okay. All right, so good information here. You know, I like the the visual uh, the visual side of that. Um, makes it easy to see what those columns are about. Okay. Okay. So you can view your columns. You can select them. You can inspect them a little bit. Uh, learn a little bit about the data. And then you can go and build a model. Okay. So you have two options. Uh, you can either run a quick build. Um, which will just, I suppose, train a single job. Uh, and you can run a standard build, which will run many jobs, and we'll get back to that in a second. Okay, but so let's run a quick build first. Okay, so just go and do this and click. And it's gonna run for, it's gonna run for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, I've already done that. So uh, let me uh, let me go back to uh, this model that I have already trained. This is the one. So we see that this quick model is 96.7% accurate, but don't get excited because remember the data set is uh, is imbalanced towards the the negative class, and in fact we can see here 96.72%. Uh, so if we had a naive model that predicted zero all the time, it would still be right. 96.72% of the time. So not very good. Um, and this is probably you would want to call out here. I mean, people who are not super familiar with ML um, could think this is a really good model. And in fact, it's it's not, it's just, it's just a terrible model. Uh, so if we look at scoring here, we have this, you know, fancy view, which, you know, I, I personally find confusing. So I'm going to go and look at advanced metrics. Uh, my positive class is one. I do see that the, this model pretty much predicts uh, zero, right, all the time. So 
um, none of the true positives are actually picked up by the quick model. Um, so we have a few false positives, but none of the true positives, none of the actual fraudulent claims are picked up, right? And so, um, yeah, accordingly, um, um, you know, the F1 score is, uh, is terrible, right? So accuracy is very high, but the other metrics are not great. Okay, but again, it's a quick model. So if you had a, if you had a balanced data set, if you had a more reasonable data set, uh, it could do a better job. And, uh, and in fact, it did an okay job on the Titanic survivor data set. But in this case, uh, it's not very good. And um, I, I think automatically we could say, hey, you know, something's wrong here. Don't, you know, don't take this uh, very high accuracy for, uh, for granted. Fine. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll just go and uh, and discard this model, um, and I need to train another one. Uh, so let's go and uh, and do that. Um, so let's go and train a new model, and still do that on the claims. And this time I'm gonna go and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and run a standard build okay now exact same process okay so just click on this thing and off it goes right and this time uh of course it's gonna run uh quite longer and um and yep so it tells us about yeah, a little less than two hours um and well i've already done this um of course but before we jump to the results, uh, let me show you what happens under the hood. So I'm opening Studio now uh, in the same region that I'm uh, running Canvas and uh, checking the experiment and trials here. I, I see obviously there's an AutoML job that ran. Okay, and this is the completed version. So yeah. Uh, if you had any doubt um, that uh, Canvas was using SageMaker Autopilot, well, I don't think there's a doubt anymore. So we see the completed job, we see the best model, um, and we see some files uh, in the studio storage. So uh, yeah, dataset files and uh, yeah, SHAP value files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I just wish this was not stored at the root. I mean, how hard can it be to store this in a folder with the name of the Canvas job? Because if I keep running jobs, I'll keep either, you know, overwriting those files or just making a mess of everything. So if we could keep things a little organized, I think that'd be better. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's what's uh, going on here. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that model in a second. So... After about two hours, so the full training job was complete. And this time we see an accuracy of 90%. Okay, so let's look at the detailed metrics. So here's that wavy thing again. Um, and if we look at the machine learning metrics, uh, so accuracy again is not really relevant. Um, the F1 score is 0.27, which is very low. Um, that's... Uh, caused by again the the, the poor uh, the poor job that this model does on the on the positives and uh, AUC is is kind of okay but uh, not not great um, w one thing I'm missing here is the ability to set the prediction threshold and uh, and yes that's one thing you could do in Amazon machine learning in 2015 um, and you could actually set the prediction th threshold to optimize for you know, false positives or false negatives and then you could go and deploy that model with the um, with the modified threshold so uh, yeah that's not something we can do here it's probably uh, uh, a good thing to add and uh, and I really liked how uh, six years ago we could move that slider and see the see uh, you know how we could optimize for negatives or positives so if you could bring that back that'd be nice so on top of metrics, we also see um, information on how features and feature values contribute to the prediction. And this is called column impact, but it really is feature importance, and it's based on SHAP values that are computed during the, uh, uh, the training process by autopilot. So for example, if we look at 
uh, yeah, that's a number of witnesses. Okay. Uh, and of course, the positive class is one. We can see that uh, the more witnesses you have, uh, the less likely that claim is to be fraudulent, right? We see a, a very strong negative contribution if you have uh, three, four witnesses, right? Which which makes sense. If, if you're a fraudster, uh, it's quite difficult to find four people who, who are going to say, oh, yeah, 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 this is a real accident when, when it wasn't. <laughs> right, so witnesses are uh, are very useful in figuring out what uh, uh, what a claim really is. Uh, you know, likewise, the the number of insurers in the past five years. Um, so if you've had four, yeah, three, four, or five insurers in the past five years, uh, there's a very strong positive contribution to the outcome. So this means you know th this is more likely to be predicted as a one, and so. To be a fraudulent, uh, a fraudulent claim. So that's that's pretty interesting. Um, that's pretty interesting. That's that's very useful. And uh, and you know the visual design here um, is is pretty nice, right? I, again, I just wish we could resize and zoom in and zoom out, but maybe that's coming later. Okay. Um, so what else can we do here? Uh, we can share the model. Oh, let's try that. Share. Maybe I want to send this to my data scientist friend. Say, hey, I've got this amazing model, and uh, take a look at it. Right? All right. I've never tried this. So what's happening now? Create a link. Oh yeah. Okay. Copy a link. Mhm. Mm and now, if I go here, what's going on? Probably this is going to open Studio. Okay, so it opens the model view, um, and what do we see here? Model overview, we see the name of the canvas job. We see, yeah, the data set this was trained on. What happens if I click on this? Uh, okay, opens S3, all right. And what happens if I click on best model? So here we see the actual model. We see feature importance. Uh, we see metrics. So it's the it's the studio stuff we we usually see, right? Um, and okay, we see the classification, the confusion metrics, some additional metrics here. Okay, nice artifacts. Okay, so we see artifacts, input data, training splits, um, and yeah, the actual model is this. So if I went and grabbed this and extracted it, I would find that uh, that model, right, which is an uh, which is an XJBoost model, I think. All right, um, and the next step would be to predict where I can either batch predict. So why don't we try that? Um, yeah, let's go and I, let's try and I don't have a test set here. So I'm just going to try and predict. Okay, so it took a few seconds. And yeah, I see. I see predictions and I see the probability as well, right? So the class label and the probability. And I can download this as a CSV file. Okay, fair enough. And can I do single prediction? Okay, because I couldn't do that uh, with my Titanic data set example. It, it wouldn't work. Okay, so I see my features. I see some values here. What are those? Um, averages, maybe? I don't know. And I, I can, uh, can change that. Oh, yeah, reset all to average. Okay, so yeah, that's these are average values. Okay, so we could just say go and predict and uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just see the probability changing. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. That works. Glad I could test it. Uh, okay, um, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good. So I think that the, the bit I'm missing here is 
assuming I have a good model and assuming, you know, I'm getting that CSV file every day, uh, how do I, how do I work, right? Would I uh, go and upload the CSV file to the, to canvas and predict it myself? Um, or would I need the data science team or the ML ops team to actually deploy this to a SageMaker endpoint and, and build a workflow? You know, there's, there's still a bit of, uh, of work involved here. It would really be nice if, if we could simply deploy the model and, uh, and, and allow some automation. But again, maybe that's coming later, right? Maybe that's coming later. So there you go. That's my second look at Canvas, which is a little more positive than the first because I was able to test a little more. And uh, I hope AWS will be uh, able to iterate quickly on this, uh, fix some of the missing slash weird features in there, uh, rename three plus whatever to multi-class classification and add a little more context for users, you know, warning them about imbalance or missing values or um, giving them a little more information on data quality. And I think that'd be, that'd be really useful to understand what this model really does and is it really good and what the numbers mean. And, and more than everything, I really hope uh, we'll see more task types and, and more algos. Uh, this is based on autopilot, which has a small selection of algos to pick from compared to other uh, O2ML frameworks out there. So yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for. And you know, who knows, maybe we'll get uh, computer vision and NLP and some more good stuff down the road. Because right now, uh, even though those task types are the most popular enterprise task types, uh, it's 2021. And you know, it's not just linear regression and, and classification out there. So just my two cents. Okay, I hope this was informative. Please check out all the links in the video description and uh, I'll see you soon with more content. Until then, have fun, keep learning. Bye-bye.